Today on Suncoast View, proposed Lido pool renovations are making waves with residents. We'll talk about the changes. Actor John Heater, better known as Napoleon Dynamite, stops by from the Sarasota Film Festival. We'll chat with him and find out what else is coming up this week at the festival. And we'll learn how to defend ourselves against a surprise attack with whatever everyday object we can grab. All that and more right now on Suncoast View. Welcome to the show and welcome back to Megan Greenberg. Great to have you with us. Thank and we you. also welcome back Suncoast actress Carolyn Michael. Glad to see you. Nice to see you. We're mm -hmm. gonna have Great a to be here. Good. We have a lot of fun today, Sarasota Film Festival Week, and we are looking forward to talking some of the actors and directors and hearing about all the things still to come this week. But first, we have to hear about one of the mascots, as we call him, of our show, <laughs> Baby Arlo. He's the best. Yep, he's <laughs> You're the not best. biased at all. Not the least bit biased. Yep, he's a year active and, half. and mobile, right? Are you losing Very. your mind? No, he's he's actually really gentle. How he, old is he? He's a year and a half. Um, so you know, he climbs on the sofa. He likes to go over thresholds. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know. I don't know how many parents learn that they like to open a door, walk over the threshold, walk back in, walk over it. I didn't <laughs> realize that a that. toddler <laughs> could spend an hour walking over a step. But that's Back better than like emptying the cat food or something, right. Right. which will come, yes. says the mother. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting that. It used yes. to amaze me that the, everything becomes a jungle gym with a boy. Yeah. Because I grew up without boys in my world. Oh. God is laughing since I have so many now. Um, but yeah, like the chair is something that one crawls up and falls off, crawls up and falls off. That, like, and that's how fun. How do you spend an hour and a half getting on a seat, <laughs> off a seat, on a seat, off a seat, on a seat? Uh, right. They have Sweet. so much endless desire to do monotonous tasks. I didn't he's know lucky, that. He's lucky though because he's the first boy so he can explore it all. I'm yes. the youngest of four boys. I couldn't do anything. My parents were wise by the time well, they I had given up. I would have thought they'd have so given up. That's why I'm so delicate because I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't climb or anything because my parents were like, oh, we've been through this yeah. three do times. Do we need some therapy? <laughs> well, all right. Sorry, it's about Arlo. It's about Arlo. <laughs> That's funny. Well, you're at a great age. Active, curious, yeah. enjoy it. We're, but we're nearing potty training age. Oh, oh well, that won't be so right. far. Call us when that's over. Yeah, exactly. You got a while. Three's the magic number. All right, well, Carolyn, your life is exciting in a very different way. You are a part of the Sarasota Film Festival this I week. I am. Tell I'm us so about Katya. It was so fantastic to film it. It's, it's, it was written, produced, and directed by Nida, I have to pronounce this correctly, Jonitas. Okay. And she is fantastic. And this and is it a was, short film? It's a short film. It's, it's being shown on Thursday and the standby only right now. Oh, and that's they're exciting. they're thinking about adding another show. Well, you it. look phenomenal in and this shot. Tell us about the premise of the film quickly. Oh, well, well, it's three circus women, and I play a Russian Cossack rider, oh, a Russian yes. Cossack rider, drinking, smoking, <laughs> drunk, and and the, however the the shots on the horse are not me. Oh, <laughs> all right. I have a double. Wow. And it's about three women who have this best friend who's been abused, and they're all very upset about the fact that it's been abused. It's for perfectly you know appropriate for the Me Too hashtag Me oh, Too yeah. right. well, era. Well, appropriate for here with of course the and it's heritage. and it's been done. It's, it's been you know pr produced, directed, acted by all Sarasota people and right. um, and and uh, Joey Durango was the f f uh, cinematographer. Oh, this and, is great. And um, Nicole Esquade is in it and Jennifer Ashley Snow and. It's a wonderful film about these three women, and they're, uh, they sort of pour their hearts out when, because they're talking about this friend of theirs who's been abused, and then there's a mystery in there, and there's magic in there, and there's a surprise ending, oh, which I cannot tell that. you about. All right, well, you can get a look at all of this. This short, Katya, is premiering on Thursday, April 19th, and that is along with A Frenchman in Florida. And that's 845 at the Art Ovation Hotel. But check on the tickets since it sounds like they're going quick. Well, they also up. might add a... Uh, Another show? Okay, oh, well, great. sarasotafilmfestival.com, and we're going to talk a lot about the film festival today. Let's check and see who is in the kitchen today. We welcome Fran from Muse at the Ringling. Welcome, Fran. What you working on in there? Well, today I'm going to make a crustless, gluten-free quiche, something we're featuring at Mother's Day at Muse. Oh, mm. all right. Well, Mother's Day is coming up quickly, and that sounds like a great way to start it. Mm -hmm. So something we will uh, find out more about yeah. as we work with Fran throughout the show. also want to tell about a, another great event that is happening tomorrow as part of the Sarasota Film Festival, the Women's Sports Museum and the State College of Florida Film Club are all getting together to screen 
a league of their own tomorrow yeah. night. A big That's fan really favorite better. for years and years. <laughs> two of the stars from the film, plus two of the original female baseball players the film is based on, will be on hand. Oh and gosh. a little rumor tells me we yes. might get to meet them here on Suncoast View as they well. Well, set your DVRs if you don't, because we are going to have two of the two of the actresses and two of the original. Oh my God, that is so exciting. Yes, two of the original um, could, baseball players. To talk to those peaches? women. Yeah. Yes. The and one of, of the them, the, the Madonna's character, All the Way May, was yeah. based on her. So yes, we're going to meet them tomorrow. <laughs> Do you want to be known as All the Way May the rest of your life? That's sure. amazing. Yes. <laughs> that is amazing. Well, I did joke. I was like, I, you know, as, as, as we were talking about having them on, I thought, I know everything about this movie because, uh, strangely, it was one of my favorite movies, even uh, though I was a young preteen boy. No, uh, there's no crying in baseball. Yeah. Not at all. The fourth brother. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's coming up this week, too. Again, a great Sarasota Film Festival week. Mm -hmm. Well, it is time for our first hot topic. And the city of Sarasota's plans for the renovated Lido Beach Pool and Pavilion are making waves with residents. The proposed plan renovates the existing building and adds seating to the patio, including table service. More shade will be provided. A tiki bar would also be added. Pool cabanas would also be available. Now, the city says these improvements will add positive cash flow and remain accessible to the public. Parking has been labeled a bit of a concern, but why do you think we are hearing so much backlash? To me, this appears to be a little bit more than just about parking. Mm -hmm. people hate I don't know. You know, I live in that area, and I don't know about whether we're hearing why we're hearing so much backlash. It seems to me that obviously traffic in that area is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Since I live there, I can mm -hmm. see I have to like time in season. <laughs> I have to time when I'm going to leave my house to go anywhere. Right. Um, but the, I, the the whole project sounds like a really great project. So I'm not I'm not understanding the backlash, except maybe the, if they're taking up parking spaces, that would be a problem. That's a Sarasota thing. There, people are always resistant to what changes, and I think that pavilion's been there. I used to live right around the corner and yeah. it was kind of nice there was Sunday lobster rolls were only on oh, Sunday yeah. and it was just kind of you know your little neighborhood quaint. jaunt and then it was I think, quaint. yeah but the beach is more importantly is there gonna be beach there for <laughs> whatever is built to support it but people always seem resistant to yeah it I mean, but it sounds like a really great thing with yeah. with the, um, the swimming pool being renovated mm -hmm. and, and being available to people they still have to pay to get, do it yeah mm -hmm. but, Absolutely. But, ne but nevertheless and then there'll be lounge shares and yeah. then there'll be a whole area Area for children. There's old children's playground Splash that's free. Pad. Well, yep. We're a beach and community, so and there's not a lot of beach eating, a lot of beach areas to hang out. There's not. A, I mean, there's the beach, of course, right. but not places much with tiki bars. Yeah. Yeah. and not to mention renovation of the restrooms. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the bathrooms are a big deal. Really like that. I know. <laughs> I remember a while ago they were talking about they, they put out bids, and and I think maybe the owners of the Daiquiri Deck were had a bid in and everything. My concern is that it's going to take so long before there's even a green light the people that have the money and that are saying I will you know refurbish it to this level so that I can lead the project are gonna lose interest if it takes so if long, it takes too then long. Like, okay we're moving on yeah you know? I think people are more you know I understand the quaintness I mean the neighborhood is amazing and I'm sure that would nice be nice to feel like it was your little area but the bottom line is it's in a major tourist area st. Armand's has tons of people I think like that more facilities that we can have there right to, to accommodate the fact that there are more tourists That's now true. and there are more yes. winter people coming will actually help preserve the right. nature of the neighborhood so that it's it, mm -hmm. it, it can be concentrated and people can be served in that area That's and it's true. the struggle throughout the entire Sun Coast I mean as yeah. we become more of a destination and more popular you know it's hard to preserve the quaint in some places yes, but yes. you know better that than the traffic backlog yeah. so yes. Yes. let's see if it keeps going Absolutely. forward <laughs> so rapper Kendrick Lamar is celebrating an impressive accolade he just won the Pulitzer Prize in music the honor makes him the first non-classical or jazz musician to ever win a Pulitzer and and obviously the first rapper. The Pulitzer Committee says this shines a new light on hip-hop music. By the way, this award was unanimous with the committee. Mm -hmm. Lamar's album entitled Damn tackles personal and political issues central to modern American life. What do you think about this? I love this. I love this. I think that uh, that hip hop should have should be recognized for the great art form that it is. It is poetry. It is rhythm. Uh, Hamilton on Broadway uh, yes. is a was great example yes. of of getting the masses that are resistant. Remember, rock and roll was was uh, you know 
too much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it hasn't won a Pulitzer. I mean, yeah. I think this speaks to what a Pulitzer is all about. First of all, change and, mm -hmm. you know, perception. But also, I like to joke, I'm forced to listen to a lot of rap, <laughs> a lot of trap. I have a lot of teenagers, <laughs> and I've, I, they call it trap music. I've gotten over some of the bad parts that we all know. There's some harsh language, all that kind of thing. When you listen to the writing skill right. involved with stringing those thoughts together in a pedantic meter, in a, mm -hmm. in a rhyming fashion, mm -hmm. that is true talent. And they're I mean, not all it, created equal. I mean, we're like Justin Bieber absolutely. is not the same as you know, John Lennon. They're just mm -hmm. no, this is um, a specific but, award. You're right. This is a specific award right. to a specific human who is really capable of putting those, right. those that the whole he does it better right. than and and most. Talking what, about the issues that need to be yeah. talked about. Right. And if you don't understand, if this is shocking to you, which I, maybe it's not shocking to no, people, there was but a if backlash. this is shocking to you, read the lyrics. You know, like yes. listen to the song, read the lyrics, and try to understand. And maybe you can you can get a glimpse into some of the issues that he's I talking about. I think that's about. great advice, and I think I'd encourage people to do that because there was a big social media backlash, especially from the classical you know, mm -hmm. side of things, and I do hope they'll pull up some of his lyrics and read it, because I, I mean, do well, think you like we just talked about Lita. It's, important to, open our arms change, and be, it's so. important to open our arms and be broad in terms of the uh, who we're including and how we're moving into the future. Uh, talent. Uh, yeah. All of our cultural endeavors. Absolutely. Now, I will say on the flip side that I teach a class at the Y, and we use a lot of top 40 hip-hop music, yeah. and I will often tell the people in the class, don't Google the lyrics. Right. <laughs> <'Cause> some <laughs> right. of them, like, don't. If you like right. the song now... I <laughs> think we're pretty safe on this <laughs> right. one. At yeah, least Pulitzer says so. So Don Knotts, best known as Barney Fife from The Andy Griffith Show, passed away at oh. 81 years of age. Oh. And his daughter is now sharing stories about their life together in a new memoir. Well, she says that even in his final moments, he was hysterical. And that his wife and her actually had to run out of the room at kind of at the end so as not to laugh at him on his deathbed. <laughs> However, she's now being told that she should have stayed, that a comedian lives for the laughs, and that he would have loved it. Yeah. yeah, I just think That's it's nice to hear that he was that person that we remember mm -hmm. him yeah. as. Yeah. Just Very that sweet. goofy, jokey, sweet mm -hmm. per human. When I was a kid, um, our my brothers, our, our uncle passed away, and all of the adults were very serious, obviously, in the funeral home, and we sat in the lobby, and we laughed. We told stories about mm -hmm. him, because he was a very funny guy, and we laughed, and so ever since I was a kid, I've always thought, if that's the person's spirit, that they're, they're a fun-loving, entertaining person, then laugh with them, you know? Right. And not, certainly not point and laugh at someone <laughs> on their deathbed, but if that's... <laughs> not laugh at them. Yeah, laugh Don, with them. Don Knotts was always funny. <laughs> Mr. Right. Furley, and people knew him mm -hmm. of all generations. So, yeah. Comedians it, love laughter. It's, yeah. like, it's like gold to them. Yes, yes, we do, don't we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, well, you're not supposed to laugh too much at your family when they're alive. We've all heard the mother-in-law jokes. Well, this family takes it to a whole new level. A man told his wife in front of a judge that he was going to bill her for the cost of accommodating her exceptionally difficult and disruptive mother. Apparently, this mother-in-law, like, walks into the marital bedroom, no matter what is going on, rearranges their things in their house to her satisfaction, and then complains when and the husband does such things as watch TV. Well, this marriage, as a result, is apparently now over, and the man wants retribution for putting up with the mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Any good mother-in-law stories? Anyone? Uh, I, I am, yes, I'm blessed with an amazing mother-in-law, So, uh, but I know friends <laughs> that uh, the, the relationship was so contentious with the mother-in-law that, that the mother-in-law had to leave the home because, at the end of the day, they were like, the relationship is the married couple. Yeah. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. to preserve that, the mother-in-law had to leave. I don't know if you get retribute. I mean, imagine imagine what that will do for so many couples. Will that be a new <laughs> caveat that you're working to get clean up? It like was the mother-in-law, you owe me. You can't have the mother-in-law in the house. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've been lucky twice and yeah. glad not to have to deal with it. So <laughs> we're going to check in with our happy hour forecast. When we come back, some very important self-defense tips. Good afternoon, I'm Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with your first alert weather forecast. A beautiful afternoon, temperatures warming into the mid-70s and uh, the breeze has uh, lessened somewhat. Still, the waves are a little bit on the high side out there in the Gulf of Mexico, running two to four feet, but a nice beach day it has been and looks like it'll be a great sunset tonight. Hardly any clouds around at all. And as far as our current condition goes, 79, the dew point is at 44 and that humidity really low, 29%. Current temps in the 70s now all across the state from Pensacola down to Key West, uh, 78 now into Miami. Dew point temperatures are low once again, so we'll see some cooler temperatures overnight. Uh, right now that dew point making uh, very dry conditions around town. And as far as sustained winds go, well, they're not all that strong today. They were much higher yesterday. They're out of the north and northwest, anywhere from 5 to 10 for the most part. A little bit higher near the coast and 8 mile an hour wind. 
out of Northport right now. Well, much more in our forecast for the rest of the work week coming up today at 5. See you then. There are many great products on the market to aid in a self-defense situation, but what happens when an attack against you occurs and you don't have anything with which to protect yourself? Derek Clark, owner of Clark Self-Defense, is here to show us everyday objects that can be used for protection. Thank you, Derek, and you brought some of your students to help us as well. So let's talk, you, you, you never think that you're going to have to defend yourself, but that's <laughs> part of the issue is you're taken by surprise. What are some, um, some events in which this could occur? Well, I brought some household items that you see every day. Um, it could be a college campus, mm -hmm. it could be at work, it could be situations at school. I mean. It happens anywhere. Going shopping at, at yeah, a parking if you, lot if you park far away, and if you go back to your car. Right. So, that's, so you might not have, you've shown us some great tools in the past, but you might not have access to those because you didn't plan to be attacked. True. So you have to use things that you uh, might already have on your person. Yes, yes. And we brought t two uh, students of mine, Angela and William. Okay. We're going to demonstrate some pretty basic self-defense right. moves. So let's talk through some, okay. of, the, um, some of the items that you, you're so going to show us that we might just have. The first thing we brought was, it was just an ordinary pen. Okay. And my student Angela is holding one, you don't even notice it. It's in her right hand, it's underneath. So I tell students if, they're, if they feel threatened and something's going on, they feel red flags, they hold the pen. And that could be used as a weapon. Uh, um, you don't even need to know martial arts to know that this could puncture and cause me to not hold on and let go anymore. Is it important that she holds it in that bent over yes, fashion or is that just concealing? It's very important. Okay, so Because once it. I see it, yeah, if I see her holding it like this, I know, oh, now She's I'm going to try something. Uh -huh. All right. right, so I want to go <coughs> like this. It She's holding wrist. it like that, okay. okay? And part of the three Ds, detect, diffuse, and defend. Okay, okay that's the biggest thing with okay. self-defense. So I'm going to come up to her. I'm already in her area of she needs to uh, defend, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna come up to Angela, I'm gonna put my hands on her. She's gonna bring her hand up like this with the pen and just come over the top with the top of the pen. She can strike me, hit me in the face, the eyes, Ooh, soft right. tissue. And it's a good thing to have that pen secure. Mm -hmm. And yes. so I don't recognize. So this is like anything that can protrude can be a weapon anything. if you are, uh, you know, un unsuspectedly attacked. Absolutely. Okay. And if you get a little more advanced, like Angela, let's say I go to grab, go ahead, Angela, do the move. She could even take me around wow. and control the situation better and have that pen. And still have the possession. weapon. Yeah. And yeah. because it was concealed, the attacker would not look oh, to yeah. think, oh, there, there might be a weapon I should get out of her Absolutely. Hand I was surprised by her. Wow. And yeah. just a pen, which we all have. Uh, yep. We all right. carry things. And yep. Right. Sharpie, wow. anything like that. Great yeah. work. All right. What's and another example? Mm -hmm. Another example. Let's say William. William just going to school, has his backpack. You can use your backpack as a self-defense tool. So if I come up, cause a little trouble, he gets the backpack off. Right away, that's a barrier. Oh, wow. <coughs> Good. Okay. He's using that as a shield to keep separate. Even if I had a, like a weapon or something like that, he can use that to block. And the books and all the heavy stuff in there can stop my force, my force going yeah. through and oh, it will hurt wow. if I strike it. Derek, could this also apply to a woman's purse? Yes, purses, uh, laptops, you know, mm -hmm. briefcases, if you're carrying, I okay. think it would work just this as well. This is also good too for people that travel because you typically Absolutely. have some sort of a carry-on bag. Yes. And if you are in another city woman. for a hotel or for, for students that we know, we, we joke on the show about how heavy backpacks have become yeah. for students, but in this case, it, it's well, a good thing. Well, even if you have a self-defense weapon with you, you might not have time to grab it, mm -hmm. but you'd have time to grab your purse or Absolutely. grab your laptop. Or yeah, it's always it's carried. It's, a good, so it's, it's a good way to think. Yeah, as long as you're aware of that and you know, like, I'm carrying all these weapons on me and I don't even know it. it and remember, it's not a weapon. It's a tool. Mm -hmm. Your intent using it makes it become a weapon. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, another item. Another I item we have is just your everyday magazine. So, let's say I feel threatened. Okay. Nonchalant. Angela's at the bus stop. Now, when she rolls a magazine, this becomes a heavy dowel. It's like it's wood. Okay. And I cannot bend it, and it's pretty solid when it's wrapped tightly together. See that? Boom. Okay. So Angela's going to hold that, right? And I'm going to come up to her, and let's just say I come up to grab her. I start pulling her hair. She's going to hold my hand, mm -hmm. use that newspaper or whatever she's got in her hand. Go ahead, Angela, and start hitting me. Keep oh. going until I let it go. Okay. Right, I don't wow. want to hold her anymore. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that will do it. 
Yeah. All right. So maybe before you were to walk down a street or across a parking lot that kind of just felt a little you funky, start that rolling you could process. start that just to have yeah, it. Yeah, or hands. if you just get that little weird feeling okay. and you want a little extra separation, you keep sure. that in your hand. I think it would be important to have a little more power with it. Derek, there's one tip that you always bring us when you talk to us about self-defense, and it's more about being aware. Just tell it, remind us that tip again, no matter where it's you are. Self-awareness is so important. If you're not aware of yourself, your situational awareness is not as good. It's cloudy. So it's like, all right, I don't want to throw a 50-pound dumbbell over my head. It might land on my head. That self-awareness, it goes beyond just the karate part. Mm -hmm. But if a situation occurs and people are outside people that have no control of myself, then I have a problem. So I want to make sure that, all right, I'm not going to go pet that rattlesnake. That's my self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. But you have to make good decisions. Your self-awareness puts you in bad situations. Always great information. Thank you, Derek. Thank you to our great demonstration. For more information about the many classes offered at Clark's Self-Defense, you can go to their website, clarkselfdefense.com. Coming up next, we're going to learn about fighting the obesity epidemic right here on the Sun Coast. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Did you know you could get life insurance in just a few minutes? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through True Stage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with just a single phone call, and you cannot be turned down for any reason. Even if you have health problems or are living on a fixed income, True Stage guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance policies could work for you. True Stage cares for you the same way you care for your family. In fact, True Stage policies are already protecting over 18 million Americans. True Stage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. My mom didn't have life insurance and the cost all fell on me. And that's expensive. Mm -hmm. we're, we're still paying for yeah, that. Yeah, we're still paying for that. Call 1-800-809-8372. Now, any amount of protection can help, and you are guaranteed to be accepted. In just a few minutes, you can help prepare your family with protection amounts up to $25,000. There are no medical tests or health questions. And remember, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Getting life insurance can be fast and easy, and it could cost less than you think. Plus, your price will never increase, and your benefit will never decrease. When I leave, everything will be taken care of for them. Call 1-800-809-8372 now for a free no-obligation quote. It's fast and easy. Plus, you get True Stage's 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through True Stage. Call 1-800-809-8372 today. Here is a sobering statistic. The Centers for Disease Control say more than 70% of Americans are either overweight or obese. However, half of those don't think they have a weight problem. Dr. Mala Singh from Gulf Coast Medical Group is here as part of a three-part series on creating a healthy lifestyle to fight obesity. Great to see you, doctor. Thank you. Let's start by defining mm -hmm. overweight and obesity, because I know there's some pretty specific benchmarks that all involve BMI. Can you explain BMI to us? Sure. Um, BMI is your body mass index, and the way it's calculated is you take your uh, weight in uh, kilograms and your height in meters, and you divide the weight by the height. Okay, and there's and charts everywhere, I know. charts everywhere, and looking at the charts, you would see that a normal weight, a BMI, is about 18 to 24. Um, you go into overweight at 25 to 29, and then obesity sets in 35 to 40. Morbid obesity is then 40 plus. And okay. that statistic of 70% mm -hmm. of us considered uh, at this level than a BMI of mm -hmm. 25 or above. Correct. Boy, that's kind of alarming. 
Well, it's an epidemic, that's for sure. Yikes. Obesity is an epidemic in the U.S. 30% uh, of the Americans are obese, 17% of children are obese and overweight. So there's no single or simple solution uh, to obesity. It's a very complex disorder. So we know that eating too much and not getting enough activity, the simple factors, right. can put us at greater risk for Correct. obesity and being overweight. But there are some other risk factors as well, some of which we can't control. Let's talk about some of those risk factors. Uh, the two main causes, of course, like you mentioned, are, are unhealthy eating, poor, and lack of exercise. But there are other factors like genetics and family lifestyle. Uh, genetics you can't change, but li family lifestyle you can change. Mm -hmm. Just because your family is obese doesn't mean you have to be. You can modify your behaviors, you can modify your, your eating habits, and that'll make a big difference. But is that easier said than done? Yeah. I mean, if it's, al it's always it. very nice to say, oh, I'm not going to have that extra you know, carbohydrate well, today, and then it's sitting in front of you, and you go, well, I'll just take one bite of that donut or whatever that's it is. That's I agree. It's, it's, e it's easier little. said than done, but it's a lot easier to lose the weight than, than have to suffer the consequences of being obese. Well, yes, and the, I, I think that the problem then becomes with younger people, especially, how do you convince them to change their habits because they don't think in terms of... Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's go through the rest of that risk mm -hmm. factor list as sure. well. I thought the second one was very interesting, the social and economic issues. Well, social and economic, I would talk about it, what I would say is that, you know, uh, financial hardship. Sometimes mm -hmm. families cannot afford it. Junk food, as we know, is a lot cheaper than ha getting buying healthier foods. Dollar menus. Try to go, yeah. yes, dollar menus. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Another thing is portion control on the all-you-can-eat buffets. Mm -hmm. Those are very detrimental. Uh, I always say if you go out to eat, share your meals, you know. Mm, good uh, idea. Or t uh, sh uh, take half of it home so you have another meal for the, for the next day. Um, another thing is that safe places to exercise, for children especially. We need parks. We need uh, safe haven for uh, children and adults to exercise. Mm -hmm. Maybe employers can participate and offer some sort of... Uh, you know, uh, gyms for their employees so that while they're at work, they can go out for an hour at lunchtime oh. or half an hour. And some companies are doing that yes. now. Which we is great. Well, and that. if there's one thing that, you know, we, we say it's hard to not eat this mm -hmm. and it's hard to motivate right. yourself, a lot of motivation can be when you see the list of things that can yes. also be affected mm -hmm. by your weight. It's Absolutely. not just about how you look. Let's no. go the, through the list of complications yeah, for being overweight. Yeah, it's not just overweight. about cos a cosmetic look. It's not just, a, I want you know, to look like a model or something. It's more the, the what happens with obesity is high cholesterol, cholesterol, uh, sleep disorders, uh, cancers, cancers is a big one, obesity leads to breast cancer, uterine cancers, uh, mm -hmm. prostate cancers, uh, arthritis because you're so obese you're putting uh, hardship on your, all your bones and it's so there's a lot of things involved. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the cosmetic, it's more the what the effects of it is on your health down the road. Absolutely, a lot of reasons to do something mm -hmm. about it and Dr. Singh I'm glad you're going to be back to help us keep finding yes. new ways yes, to absolutely. make some inroads because as you said it's complicated it's and not very easy. Complicated, but, but it can important. be done. Uh, be, the main thing is to be consistent. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, formulate right. a plan, health, and your uh, eating habits, and just be consistent with it. All right, That's great to hear that. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Thank For more you. information about any of your health concerns, you can go to the Gulf Coast Medical Group website. That is gulfcoastmedicalgroup.com. Coming up next, actor John Hader stops by from the Sarasota Film Festival. The La Musica International Chamber Music Festival the annual celebration of a distinctive cultural gem in Sarasota with renowned musicians from around the world. April 9th through April 18th at the Sarasota Opera House. Visit lamusicafestival.org, click on Festival, open Tickets, and get your seats now. When money's tight and emergencies arise, CashNetUSA.com is available 24-7 to deliver quick loans for approved customers when they need it the most. Apply now at CashNetUSA.com. Money's on the way with CashNetUSA. To be able to just get my son here and not think about how we will pay for it, it just takes so much weight off of my family. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. Each day, researchers make discoveries that bring us closer to the moment when all cancer patients can become survivors. 
Their progress is made possible with the help of clinical trials. Clinical trials are the brightest torch researchers have to light their way towards better treatments. And if you've been diagnosed with cancer, they may be your brightest ray of hope. Speak with your doctor and visit standuptocancer.org slash clinical trials to learn more. Together, we can stand up for all of us. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're gonna find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country, right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity. And the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Watch ABC7 wherever you are. Just search ABC7 on your streaming device to keep up with the Suncoast from the comfort of your couch. Download ABC7 now to watch us on TV anytime you want. ABC7, we're here for you wherever you are. One of the best parts of the Sarasota Film Festival is having the stars and directors themselves right here on the Sun Coast to discuss their films. Well, today we are thrilled to have actor John Heater, best known as Napoleon Dynamite, and director Kendall Goldberg to tell us about the world premiere of their feature film, <laughs> When Jeff Tried to Save the World. Welcome. Th uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks yes. for having us. It's great to be here. Yeah. Congratulations on the thank film. You. Um, so, John, let's start. You play the title character, Jeff. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the movie and about the character. Uh, well, it's about a guy named Jeff, played by myself, who's <laughs> trying to save the world. And in this case, it's the, uh, the, the bowling alley that he works at. He's the manager of a bowling alley, and he uh, soon discovers it's going to be taken away due to financial uh, crises and uh, crises. Um, <laughs> got nailed Chrisai. it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he has to do what he can, kind of muster all the resources and the people around him in his world and see what he can do to save it. And Kendall, this is your film, yes. so um, you directed it, it's your, it's your feature film. Um, what has the experience been like for you to have it premiere? Yeah, well it's been pretty great. I mean, this is my first feature film. Um, I've been working on this for five years. I started when I was 18 years old, so it's been a huge part of my life. And um, we, we, when we didn't have the funds necessary to make the film, we turned it into a short film. Mm -hmm. And we actually brought that here last year to Sarasota Film Festival, so it's been a pretty cool experience to be back full circle with the feature. Yes, so if, if um, you know, our Suncoast viewers, if the name sounds familiar, it's because, it, like you say, it was right. a short here. How does that process work to go from a short film to a feature film? Is that always, do you test it out as a short to see if there's interest? How does it work? Well, yeah, that's, that's what the short film was sort of for us. Like I said, it started as that feature script always. It was never meant to be a short. Then we sort of condensed it to use as a proof of concept to sort of show to investors and take it around and see if anyone was interested in being a part of it. And uh, that, that's pretty much what happened. I mean, you, you make this short and you take it to film festivals or you show it to people, you send around the screener and just sort of see, see you know, this is, this is the idea, this is what we want to go for, but on a much bigger scale. And Hopefully people like it, and they the did. First date. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly. A great, that's a great yeah. analogy. Yeah. And but but you have to then, um, I would imagine, maintain the same tone and everything into when you take it into a feature film. Yes and no. I think like there was a lot we learned from the short that we changed for the feature film. Um, my writing partner Rachel Borgo and I, we sort of went and rewrote the feature almost after making the short. There are a lot of similarities. There's a, actually a couple shots of like comparisons that you look exactly the same, but just different hair. You have longer hair in the short. <laughs> it like was a year here. difference. Yeah, <laughs> very true, yeah. But um, you know, overall, like the plot is the same. Some of the characters are the same. We had to cut characters, we had to add characters, we had to cut scenes, we had to add scenes, cut dialogue, change dialogue. But um, you know, I, was, I, th I think it was a blessing in disguise to have to take a step back make that short film mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sort of use it as like a, a lesson 
and grow from mm. that, and the feature was that that much better because of it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And all right, so you mentioned that John, it was a year difference, so you were comparing shots of John. You've got John in the film, a big name. You also have Jim O'Hare from Parks and Rec. How did this come about? How did everybody come together? Well, I auditioned. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, I did, and it was, I mean, it's it's not rare that I, it's, I audition a lot, but it's like the, one of the only jobs I've gotten from an audition. <laughs> I was like, oh, this works. It's normally uh, practice, you know, you go into audition, that's yeah. practice, exposure. But um, What made you want to audition for this, though? Because, well, I mean, you've done big stuff. This is a little bit on a smaller scale, yeah. and a young new director, fresh, I'm sure. Like, yeah. what attracted well, you? Well, I love independent film. I've, mm. all, I've done a number of them, and it's always, it's always a very fun uh, experience, especially when you're working with new talent and new people who you know that these young directors, first-time directors, are really passionate about what they're... Uh, trying to sell what they're trying to do, and and I read the script and I liked the script and I just thought this is something I could do. Um, <laughs> Kendall, were you so excited when you auditioned? Yeah, I mean, seriously, I, mean, this I was is a, big a little deal. just like taken aback. I was like, okay, cool. Like people like the script, and and that made me really excited. And then, you know, I mean, th at the time it was like we didn't have any of the funds necessary, like I said, to make the film. So I just sort of was like. I emailed you. It was like, hey, I like you for the role. It's like, hey, you you're great, but uh, <laughs> we probably won't make this. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm like yeah, I, was I like, know. It's I just a nice ego rub and everything. <laughs> so, uh, well, um, I have to ask, I mean, does it help you kind of get more interest in the film by having a, a name like John attached to it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, that was probably one of the big reasons we were able to make the film. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's why you, you got no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the, that was really That's why it took so long. That's why it took so long to get made. No, I mean, yeah, you know how difficult it is. I mean, yeah. you you even said you've said multiple times like you were you were like sure keep in touch with me, but I'm sure deep down you were like I'll probably never hear from her again. You never know. I mean, it's happened with projects. I mean, it happens all the time. Yeah. You know, some I've either auditioned or I've read or I've been given an offer, and then like a couple of weeks later you don't hear anything, and then it's dead in the water. Um, but I mean, I always said I was like, look, if this gets made, yeah, I'm attached and I'm. Definitely for it, and she kept me up to date with every over the next couple of years. It really was like I think it's so cool to hear something. that. Yeah. Like yes. couple of years, this takes. Like even when you have a big name behind it, there's no guarantee the money comes to make it. Like yeah. it, I don't think any of us realize what a struggle it is mm -hmm. to get most of these movies on the screen. Yeah. I mean, that's it it's says difficult. a lot for all of you and the time you put in. It's not about money until someone says, okay, you can do it. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. and and to choose, like you're saying, John, to give back to independent films is a great, mm -hmm. great inspiration, I think. I wish more uh, superstars like yourself did. Um, let's talk a little bit, you mentioned independent films, obviously, Napoleon Dynamite, huge, huge cult hit. Did you know that it was gonna be that successful when you were making it? No, no, we had no, I mean, we, it was the same thing, it was an independent film, there was no names attached, nobody involved was really that big and so I just at the time remember thinking well I think this is great I think all the cast and crew we think it's gonna be great if we have a great cast and crew screening and that's it then I'll be happy you know <laughs> just as long as I have a copy uh, burnt onto a DVD that I can show to my family and friends and you can always get another perm yeah you, know, you can no. always do that yeah, yeah. Like yeah. just hold back. on to so that. Kendall real quick all right so he didn't know about Napoleon Dynamite blowing up and then it did what is next for um, for your film great question uh, I wish I knew the answer um, <laughs> what's now, your dream right now well we're, we're seeking distribution and okay. hopefully you'll see it on both big and small screens very very soon are you taking it to other film festivals we are we're taking it to we'll be at Newport Beach Film Festival next week and Boston IFF Boston oh, yeah. nice. we're gonna be at Bentonville which is Gina Davis's uh, uh, film festival in in Bentonville Arkansas mm -hmm. and then we're gonna sort of see what else comes up and take it around that is great yeah. we wish you all the thank luck you. thank you both thank for you. being here thank you we're thrilled to have you this is the 20th anniversary of the Sarasota Film Festival there's still so many great films to see you can catch out a short that might turn on to be a feature film next year all right, coming up next, our movie guy Matt is here with some of his top film picks you won't want to miss for the rest of the week. Get breaking news alerts focused on the Sun Coast. Download the ABC7 News app. A used car from Toyota of Sarasota is a great way to drive more car for your money. We'll help you select just the right vehicle from our huge inventory. Online or in person, shop for your next car and compare at Toyota of Sarasota. Toyota of Sarasota. Watch Good Morning Suncoast weekdays on ABC7. First off, breaking news, an officer involved shooting. Two officers have been injured. This is where police just took down the crime scene tape.
Weekdays starting at 5 a.m. on ABC7. This is an ABC7 News Update. Hi, I'm Scott Dennis. Here's what's coming up at 5 o'clock. New developments regarding human remains found in a Sarasota canal yesterday. How investigators determined the remains were not those of a missing teen. And how you can give your input on the design of the Bay Sarasota project. Now let's get a check on our weather with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Scott, a beautiful afternoon, 79 degrees right now, sunshine and low humidity as a result of that low dew point, which is now at 44, 29% uh, humidity and making for a high fire danger right now with north winds at 8. Uh, again, the high surf advisory has expired, but rip current advisory remains with us. Uh, some pretty big waves out there coming on shore uh, causes problems. It should be a beautiful evening for the sunset, and as far as temperatures go, currently, all in the 70s from Pensacola to Jacksonville down to Key West. We'll look for your complete forecast coming up at 5. See you then. Keep up with the Suncoast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. I can't believe they charged me this much. I don't know what I'm going to do. Ah! Go to CashNetUSA.com now. If approved, you may get the money you need as soon as tomorrow. Thanks. Who are you? I'm CashNetUSA.com. Man. Apply now at CashNetUSA.com. Money's on the way with CashNetUSA. My name is Blake. I received a heart transplant when I was two weeks old. I play defense for the Red Hot Tornadoes. Sometimes my heart starts pounding like faster and faster as I go. I know I have someone else's heart inside me. It makes me feel happy because someone was generous enough to give me a second chance to live. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. The Sarasota Film Festival is in full swing and it is far from over. Our movie guy, Matthew Lydell, has been checking out the stars on the scene and he's here to tell us what he likes and what we can all look forward to. All right, you went to opening night, which mm -hmm. is exciting. I did. It was really exciting. It was the opening night with uh, Eric Stoltz film, uh, Class Rank. I was there on the red carpet. We got to see him. Uh, Ray Collins was interviewing him for the news and everything. It was really exciting just like seeing everyone come out there and everyone was ready for a great time. And it was, it was, yeah, it was it was, it was a really fun time. It was fun. Oh, mm -hmm. Nice. It's great to see all that hubbub just around, you know, mm -hmm. the theaters and the people in town. But, of course, it is about the movies. It is. So tell us what you thought. Um, did you see the first one, the Won't You Be My Neighbor? So that one actually hasn't come out yet. Okay. And I wanted to talk about the things that people still have a chance to see. Okay, That good. is coming up on Sunday on the 22nd. And this has been getting a ton of attention even outside of this festival. There's like a ton of really big movies that are playing at this festival more than just like some of the smaller ones. Uh, this is a documentary from uh, Morgan Neville who uh, actually won the Oscar for Best Documentary in 2013 for 20 Feet from Stardom. I saw the trailer for this at a completely unrelated movie and was worried I wouldn't be able to focus on that movie because I was thinking about this trailer so much. It looks great and we have a quick clip of it so let's take a look. He had a singular vision of kindness and love. Love is at the root of everything. All learning, all relationships, love or the lack of it. Children have very deep feelings, just the way everybody does. There must be times when you do feel blue. I'm not feeling blue right now, though. Me neither. <laughs> Won't you be my neighbor? Well, I suppose so Aww. there's, yeah, been a ton of buzz about this. Mm -hmm. Everyone, yeah. Aww. So that's going to be this Sunday, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to be there. So. Okay, good. Yeah, mm -hmm. make a note of that for the calendars. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about Eighth Grade. Eighth Grade is uh, written and directed by first-time director and also actor and YouTube star Bo Burnham. Uh, it has been getting a lot of attention from uh, Sundance Film Festival, where mm -hmm. it made one of its uh, first yeah. debuts. 
Uh, it has been getting attention in the way, sort of like Lady Bird in terms of a high school comedy, but uh, people have been saying it, it's very realistic and down to earth. Like this is how kids actually talk, how they actually look, how they actually <laughs> act. All right, I'll be the school. judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we have a quick look at that. So let's take a look. I think you're so cool. Maybe you just need to put yourself out there a little. I'm gonna stop eating saying, with hey, you if you I'm keep saying one, You said I can say one thing. <laughs> I'm really, like, nervous all the time. I try really hard not to feel that way. But you just need to face your fears and let people know the real you. Yeah, so it's been getting tons of buzz for, uh, for the lead actress and just oh, for being, you know, being something that's very realistic. And I think mm -hmm. that's going to appeal to younger audiences specifically because there's a lot of older writers and directors who try to tackle this kind of subject and mm. maybe don't quite hit the nail on the head, whereas they're saying this totally does. That's great. So there's that's been a lot be, of good young writers mm -hmm. and directors here as, yeah, we've, and as that's, we've met. Yeah, uh, that's the 17th and the 18th. Okay, so, mm -hmm. coming up fast. And then tell us about First Reformed. First Reformed is a drama starring Ethan Hawke that also got a ton of buzz when the trailer came out a couple weeks ago. It's from Paul Schrader, who is known for working with Martin Scorsese on like Taxi Driver and Raging Bull. He wrote and directed this. This, everyone's been saying, is a real actor's movie. That is the drive more, less, more than the story. Uh, Ethan Hawke is a priest who is slowly kind of unraveling after a family member dies and someone in his congregation uh, has also lost someone and it's supposed to be really intense and everyone's saying that this is one of the things to look out for and that's going to be uh, on I believe Wednesday and Saturday. Okay and I have to mention you came in Monday morning and all you could talk about was old dog story. Yes. Uh, so old we're going to throw yeah. this out there. Old dog. Yes. Yeah, so I saw it on uh, Saturday night and so what happened was when I sat down on uh, opening night for class rank I actually, uh, actually ended up sitting next to its uh, director and editor, Sally Rowe and Regina Sobel, and didn't even realize it, and then talked to them, and Aww. then met them the next night. Fun. And I was so glad to tell them that I loved the movie, but that was kind of what the experience that I had at the festival, and I think is what you can't have anywhere else, mm -hmm. is nearly every movie that I saw so far had someone there from the movie, mm -hmm. and they even stood at the door afterwards, and they took questions, and they were talking to That's people great. afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's something that you don't get. We get these huge huge movies with big actors, big directors, but then we get these small surprises that you can't get anywhere else. And there's a ton of conversations happening on Saturday, actually. Okay. Uh, Rory Kennedy is coming back, and mm -hmm. she's going to be talking about her new film, uh, Above and Beyond the NASA Story. There's also going to be, I believe, uh, Virginia Madsen. She has 1985, which, speaking of short films being turned into feature-length films, uh, that one is one of those. And oh, then yeah. Steve Gutenberg is also going to be talking. All of them are on this Saturday. And you recommend them. You say these are, it's, it's, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, these right. are all like w some of the biggest things that are going to be at the festival. And uh, come on to uh, suncoastview.com. I'm going to be updating a whole bunch of reviews throughout the week and letting you know uh, what to keep an eye out all for. All right, great. I love Matt's enthusiasm yeah. for this. And I love the fact that the names that we're seeing here now on screen often go on. You'll see them on demand, and we hope to see them on big screen. Mm -hmm. So you saw them here first with the Sarasota. To film festival. All right, thanks, Matt. Coming up next, Megan is going to give us some places to go with little ones in tow. Stay with us. protection she has. Buddy up. I'm Jill Harrington. Please visit HelpSaveTheNextGirl.com and get involved. Growing up, my mom was afraid of the water, something she did not want me to feel. So I enrolled Missy in swim lessons. It changed my life. Missy Franklin. And now you can do the same for someone that you love. There's nothing more precious than your child's well-being. So act now before it's too late. Make us play! I'm glad I did. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Visit USAswimmingfoundation.org to find, get, or give a swim lesson. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, 
We are problem solvers striving for answers. Relevancy on every platform. We are driven to create content that's compelling, engaging, where it matters. We are neighbors that care about solutions, believers in making a difference. Leaders, innovating in an exciting era of multimedia, reaching to always be the gold standard in our evolving landscape. We are Raycom Media. Find your opportunity today. Well, we are having fun. Our guest host, Megan Greenberg, always has great ideas for things to do with the kids, and she has been giving us some great ideas for toddlers, all local. Or grown-ups. Or, or, or grown-ups, <laughs> apparently. All local. <laughs> you can find these ideas exclusively online at suncoastview.com. These are all things, some of them are free, all very, very accessible, so you can check out Megan's must-haves for toddlers, suncoastview.com. We're going to check out the kitchen with Muse at the Ringling. We'll be right back. Keep up with the Sun Coast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. 20 years ago, the moviegoers of Sarasota looked up at the silver screen and wanted something more. And they got exactly what they wanted. 20 years of some of the best independent films from around the world. The most iconic Hollywood stars walking the red carpet. The most glamorous parties in Southwest Florida. 20 years building up to the most exciting announcement in, well, 20 years at the Sarasota Film Festival, April 13th to the 22nd. This is an ABC7 News Update. Hello, I'm Jacqueline Matter. Here's what we're working on for 5 o'clock. How an empty piece of prime real estate in Venice is about to be transformed into an urban forest. And taking a quick look at our first alert traffic right now, the northbound lanes of I-75 are slow moving between the State Road 70 and State Road 64 exits. Now let's get a check on our first alert weather forecast with Bob. Thanks, Jacqueline. A uh, surf advisory has expired, but still some high waves out there causing some rip current issues. Rip current advisory still with us at this point. However, a beautiful day today with high temperatures in the upper 70s, and we are looking at lots of sunshine right now. 79 currently at the Sarasota Bradian Airport, 78 in Orlando, and all in the 70s at Jacksonville now at 74, Key West 76. Dew point temperatures are extremely low, makes our humidity at around 29% right now, so a high fire danger. Uh, and it uh, looks like we'll see some cool temperatures overnight. We're expecting lows into the mid-50s. More on that at 5. See you then. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom-built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The Moore Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the Moore Space Place. Runs as art. You know the name. You know the building. But do you know what's inside? Yes, Rugs as Art is Florida's number one area rug superstore. But there is so much more. Amazing furniture, accessories, and art. All this and more. Come see for yourself. You'll love our personal touch and be pleasantly surprised by our affordable prices. Rugs as Art and more. There is so much more to explore. CashNet USA is trusted by over 2 million customers. Perfect. When I lean back, I trust that you will be there to catch me. Okay, bad idea, bad idea. 
Apply now at CashNetUSA.com. Money's on the way with CashNet USA. I'm Anne. I'm a scientist. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? Pal's my most advanced android. <gasps> this is awesome. You haven't seen anything yet. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. In life after the military, it's our duty as veterans to have each other's back. I'm retired Colonel Greg Gatson, and it's my mission to help you get the benefits and services you've earned. If you need to file a VA claim, remember these important steps. Submit an online claim through ebenefits.va.gov. Work with an accredited veteran service organization or VSO. And if you need to attend a VA claim exam, please go. Visit this website to learn what to expect. Army National Guard soldiers serve to give back to their country and their community. Their part-time commitment qualifies them for benefits such as health and life insurance, education benefits, and retirement and VA home loan benefits. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Coming up Wednesday at 4 on Suncoast View, it is the biggest grossing baseball movie of all time, and the original characters are right here on the Suncoast. The League of Their Own returns as part of the Sarasota Film Festival. We will meet two of the original ball players plus the actresses who played them in the movie. The Artful Giraffe teaches us fluid art, plus a special Venice theater collaboration. Chef Judy has the best cakes in the kitchen. Well, welcome back. We're here with Fran from the Muse at the Ringling. Mm. What you whipping up? Today we're going to make a gluten-free uh, crustless quiche. Okay. It's featured from, it's, it's on a regular menu at Muse. Very popular. I bet. Right, so if you can tell anybody that it's gluten-free and it's low <laughs> carbohydrate, right? You Everybody's can, you can, in. You can, you can, you know, Everybody's anything. in. So you're whipping together yeah. some eggs. What else is right. in there? This is a custard base. There's, there's three parts to the recipe. Okay. There's, there's wet, dry, and then there's arts and crafts. So, <laughs> right, so wet is a basic basic custard, heavy cream and eggs. It's about two parts heavy cream to one part eggs. The recipe's okay. on the website. Okay. Right? okay. Yep, sounds good. And then dry ingredients. Dry ingredients are uh, sliced dry figs, everyone's favorite ingredient in this recipe, yeah, I think. Yeah, yum. Mm. Red quinoa. The red quinoa, you can That's buy quick cooking red quinoa. You can cook it at home, like just steam it like regular rice. Is that kind of like a binder? Uh, no, the, the binder is the protein that the egg sets mm -hmm. with the cream when it bakes. Okay. Uh, blue cheese. Oh, that's my favorite oh my part. God. Oh, this is all my favorite. Right? These are all my and favorite. parsley. So typically, when we make a quiche, you make a quiche at home. Sometimes you put the dry ingredients in here and mix it up in here. Right. And then when you go to ladle out, someone is not happy because they got all the figs or someone right. else got all the blue right. cheese. <laughs> so basically, what we do is if we, we do this kind of combining thing here, this one dry ingredient step in okay. the wet. And then for arts and crafts, <laughs> I always wondered when I was a kid, well, I learned how to cut circles. Like, and then I realized when I got older as a chef, so we cut these cut little paper circles. Are those paste? Is that pastry? This is just uh, parchment paper. Parchment paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any kind of wax paper is fine. Okay. Right. Pan spray, pan release. Mm -hmm. Right. And then these are inserted. And this is just one key to the recipe. Without this, mm. you won't get the cool little shape. Right. Gotcha. Oh. Right? This okay. is what this is what preserves that. Got it. So then what we do is then we have a chance. We add the dry ingredients. And each. what's on the base there? Is that like a roasted arugula? Oh, there, there you go. That's, That's what it is, really? Stuff. No, this is right here. I did it before and after. Oh, okay. So we just <laughs> use regular mescaline greens. Okay. okay. Right? And then these are just uh, braced with a little bit of olive oil and then dried in the oven, 350 okay. degree oh, oven. So the oven. Nice. So the oven, the so same oven. It's just oven a dried green. green. Yeah. It's dried green. It's like how you make kale chips. Exactly. Oh, okay. Right. So yeah. it's the same. This is you know the before. And every and after. Everything. <laughs> and the idea is that it it, it removes the moisture okay. from the from the vegetable that way. So it That's get great. It doesn't get soggy. Okay. Right? So you put the dry mm -hmm. in, so everybody gets the right so fair everyone share. So everyone gets everything. Everyone I like this. Thing. You solve a lot of problems I've been in my house. All wrong. Yeah, me too. For years, right? And I love quiche. And this is just like a a six ounce standard cake mold or or cupcake mold. Okay. And this way, you can add as, as much or as little as you, as you like. Do you have to use heavy cream? Yes. Can yeah, I cut yes. any fat or calories? <laughs> no. no. That's what makes it good. <laughs> All right, Chef Megan. The cream, the, 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 the heavy, Go for it. The cream, you know, Eat one really fewer. Make it good, make yeah. it good. creamy. Okay. Great, exactly. Make it taste great. Okay. It's a good fat, right, high protein, right, yeah. no carbohydrate, almost <laughs> no sugar, some sugar from the fig, a little bit. Just like that. So this is going to bake in the oven for about 30 minutes. All right. The great thing about this is it can be made days in advance, cooled. Oh. 
and then you can reheat it I for a party I'm into anytime. something here. Right. It's great, it's great for it gets a little brown on top. Is that when you... Golden brown at a set. Okay. You, know, you can try to touch it and it won't jiggle. Okay. And, then, and, and Megan's going to maybe take out the, the hot, not so hot <laughs> quiches. For some reason, for I'm in love with your crunchy lettuce. That's awesome. <laughs> it's right? really good. So they come out, that you know, adorable. and then it can be reheated in this. In this Where do you want me to put right, it? Right, right there. Oh, we're going to do some plating. Right? Great. And, and then these, uh, like I said, this can be made days in advance and then reheated for your party. Okay. And then this, we is this is on the menu This is on the Mother's menu Day of brunch, years. Which it's never too early to reserve. No, my mother will tell it's you. It's starting <laughs> now. Mother's Day brunch is starting, you know, we're starting to do that now. All right. Well, these mothers will tell you that we would love to have a nice <laughs> brunch on Mother's Day. And you can do that with Muse at the Ringling. So remember their brunch and the quiches on the menu. And we are all excited about it. So thank you for this is a great recipe. We're glad it's on our website. We look forward to giving it a try. Mm -hmm. Big treat to have both Megan and Carolyn with us. So thank you thank for joining you. us. Yeah, very fun. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Take some time and enjoy the Suncoast view. Good